Today we have uh, Art Etchels, who is a semi-retired chemical engineer living in Philadelphia. He has attended many FIAV meetings in Europe and joined NAVA in 2017. Uh, Art will be presenting on topics in vexillology on the fringe. Art, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I will be talking about a fringe topic, the fringe. Okay. So uh, what is a fringe? It's the ornamental border of separate hanging threads around the edges of the flag. Usually not considered part of the flag. Civil flags may or may not have fringe. What we're going to do is go back through history and find out where the fringe came from and how did we get to where we are today. How we're going to do this, we're going to look at illustrations and pictures of historical existing flags, ordinance and the like. Our sources are going to be mainly Western, but I do have some Islamic references in here too. Okay. So here, here's a prime example that we've seen a lot in the last couple of years of presidential flags. We see an American flag on the right in the Oval Office. It has a beautiful yellow fringe. We see the presidential flag on the, uh, excuse me, the left, the right, the presidential flag has a gold fringe. I do not know why the two fringes are different, and I will not be able to answer that question by the end of my talk. That's going to be left to somebody else, but fringes seem to be important. Let's start off with naval flags. Naval flags are the ancestors of today's national flags in most cases. It's a need for a way of identifying ships of different states in the Middle Ages and, and probably even back into the ancient times. And it led to the concept of a national flag. National flags and naval flags are hooked together. Naval flags do not have fringes, I think. At least I haven't seen many. Why? It's the reason why conservatives hate flag, hate fringes. They pull the flags apart. On a windy day, a, flag, a fringe sewed to a flag will rip it to shreds. They're heavy, they cause failures because the fabric weakens with age and fringes tear them apart. And this is true of fringes throughout history. Yeah. So we don't see fringes with naval flags, which become national flags. So where did they come from? Well, we saw fringes in Roman flags, okay? They were usually hung from a crossbar, there was a fringe on the bottom edge. We'll show a picture of one here. Uh, there's lots of pictures of these things, but we have no written documentation about why just that they were. So let's go to the Middle Ages, which are fairly well recorded, okay? We had what are called armorial banners. These were square flags or rectangular flags showing the coat of arms of a person sometimes with the fringe in the person's livery colors as alternating blocks of hanging colored threads or strands. Livery colors are personal colors, personal choice colors. They're not necessarily part of the coat of arms, though nowadays there are rules for that. Often in the Middle Ages, the colors had nothing to do with the coats of arms. They were often used as address of servants and retinues and sometimes on flags. So we do have our Maria banners with fringes. There's a thing called a border company, uh, French, my heraldic French is rotten. Uh, it's the difference that the border uh, is a border of colored squares. Uh, it has been suggested that this is an attempt to depict the fringe of livery color. However, a border of red and white squares was used by the French royal family in the 1300s, well before fringes started to appear in these flags. So those are two different things. We'll show one or two examples of that. So borders and fringes are two different things. Here's uh, some pictures from uh, made for war gamers who like to do little figures with flags on them. They're very nice. They show both sides and lots of flags and uh, Here's some from the War of the Roses. On the left, we have Henry Tudors. If you look at the lower ones, there are a whole bunch of coats of arms, quartered and the like. These flags may or may not have had fringes on them. Uh, on the right, you have the, the flags of Richard III. And at the top, you have a very peculiar flag that is not armorial, okay? This is called a standard. And this has uh, reflections down to the history 
of flags, and we'll talk a little bit more of it. Okay. Um, standards still exist and are given out by the College of Heraldry. They're tapered, they're long in the fly, they have rounded or swallowtailed edges. They do not have coats of arms on them, they have badges and crests. They're often of multiple colors and horizontal stripes. They're bordered with a fringe of livery colors again. Sometimes they have the patron saint's arms or family arms at the staff, and they have mottos running diagonally through them. We'll find that these are the ancestors of military, some military flags. They're big, they're to show where people are, and the Tudor manuscripts suggest they're 11 yards long, which I find hard to believe. They were used in England, they were used in France, they were used in the erstwhile duchy of Burgundy, and in other places somewhat less. So here's some pictures of these standards. The top and the bottom ones are English, okay, they have the coat of arms of St. George, they have some badges, not coats of arms, sons and deer and uh, borders in, in multi colors. And the bottom one has different colors and things like that. Very popular during the Hundred Years War in the Tudor time. The white one with the lilies on it was used to mark the position of the King of France, presumably the uh, Castile and Leon one and the Portuguese ones were used the same way. But these are not heraldry, these are something else. The term standard has developed several meanings over the years. There's the heraldic meaning, which is well defined, which you just talked about. They're used to, to, to denote the, cal the flags cal carried by cavalry, and often they're used in terms of royal flags. So confusion in meaning. We'll have to live with that. So naval flags didn't bring fringes in. Fringes came in through, mil through uh, heraldry and into military flags. So let's talk about some military flags. Uh, the military, the armies in the 1500s, 1700s were divided into cavalry people on horses and infantry people in feet. Uh, cavalry flags carried by a man on a horse tended to be smaller. They were called standards or guidance, but they weren't gigantic. They almost always had a fringe. Uh, these are indicated the descending from noble knights, about half a meter by a half a meter. Infantry flags, infantry was very uncommon. Uh, they didn't come in until the late 1400s, 1500s. When they did come in, they often carried a flag of a saint or noble, St. George, St. Denis. They were big. They were to identify people, two meters by two meters, sometimes larger. They get smaller over the years to about one meter by one meter, but they were almost always large. Okay. So let's look at the 1500s to the 1800s. Infantry flags, large geometric patterns, horizontal stripes are very popular. We see this livery color coming back. They were made of pieces of cloth, sometimes dyes stuck together. The details were painted on, they were not embroidered and they no, had no fringes. So we said they got big, but they got smaller. And here we see some pictures of some contemporary pictures in the 1500s. We see a typical striped flag representing a city. The poles were short so the flags could be waved. We see three other flags here. Again, big flags, large compared to the men, uh, short poles uh, to be waved. And these are our city flags from the mid-German period. Uh, early cavalry flags started to look more like the standards we talked about. They were tapered, okay, that they sometimes became square. They had pictures on them. They had mottos on them. They had pictures of saints on them. They looked pretty much like they did 100 years before, okay, and they will continue to look this way up until the time of the 1800s. So from about 1600 to 1800, the unit of infantry is the regiment under colonel and it exists about thousand men divided into 10 companies of about a hundred under a captain and every company had a flag. So that meant a thousand people, you had 10 flags. 
One was special. It was called the Colonel's flag. It was of a different color or different design, often white, but not all the time. In some places, like in England, it was called the King's color, but most of the rest of Europe, it was the Colonel's color. The regiment's loyalty was to the Colonel, not the state. There were no state flags as such. Over the years, the number of company flags was reduced, uh, but eventually there was just a colonel's flag, which became the ruler's flag, and a regimental flag, which was different in some way. By the 1700s, an organization of flags, some organization had come out. Many states had distinctive major designs based on a variety of crosses or some major motif, such as an eagle. Patterns were often variations on a theme, okay? There might be difference between one company color and another, but it was in some small detail. There were lots of detail on these flags. There was a variety of colors, okay? Uh, and we'll show you some. Here's some flags from France under Louis XIV. You'll see they all have the white flag, the white cross of St. Denis but on an incredible variety of backgrounds of different colors and squares. Uh, Louis XIV had 100 regiments, so that meant he had 100 different flags times 10, 1,000 different color flags in his army. Cavalry flags during the Age of Lace, okay. They were small. Uh, they came in several shapes, square, tapered, uh, swallow-tailed. They were very elaborate. They were thick. They were embroidered. Uh, they had a fringe. The fringe was in something either silver or gold, which we'll refer to as the button color, and we'll discuss that in a bit. They had initials on them, allegorical figures. They were very complicated, hard to distinguish at any kind of distance. They were often a single color, and the color changed from regiment to regiment. It was very hard to tell the difference between a cavalry flag of one state and the cavalry flag of another state, unlike the infantry flags. There were some exceptions. Mounted infantry, of course, had a little bit of infantry stuff and a little bit of cavalry stuff. So here is a, a picture of an existing flag from one of the Louis XIV's regiments. You'll notice the embroidery is in gold. It's very long, very lavish. Of course, there is a fringe. The sun of the sun king is almost three dimensional. So these things had thicknesses to them, unlike the painted sheets of the infantry coats. Here's a Bavarian flag. Again, gorgeous coats of arms, very nice. Uh, kind of thing you can hang on your wall. And some more, and some more. Okay. Here's some more Louis XIV cavalry. You see some planar flags on the left-hand side. They're mounted infantry, but they have an odd shape and they have a complex design and lots of writing. Here's the honor guard, the, the guard of the king. Again, very elaborate. The, the fabric were damask and brocade uh, with symbols on it that uh, were complicated allegorical symbols popular at the time. So let's go to the revolutions. And the most popular is the American Revolution. And what we see here is some examples of flags of the British on the left-hand side and the French on the right-hand side, our enemies and our allies. Again, on the British side, you see the king's color, which is the flags combining the saints' flags of uh, England and Scotland. And on the right, you see, or the middle, you see that in the Canton and flags with the Red Cross of St. George, in some cases, but not all, and colors that were related to colors on the uniform, okay? Uh, on the right, you see some French ones. They look very much like the Louis XIV one. They have added antecedents to them. There's a Royal DuPont regiment, which does not have the St. Denis flag because that is a German regiment serving with the French. And we see a whole bunch of white flags, which just were white flags. So we mentioned this metal color, uh, and it's a peculiarity of the period to add to the ability to distinguish units. They varied the button color. So you had white and yellow buttons or silver and gold buttons or tin and brass buttons. 
These apply to the color of the lace on the uniforms, the color of the hat bands, the color of the writing on the infantry flag, and the color of the fringe. So you could have units that would have silver fringes, and you could have units that would have gold fringes, depending upon other things. Here are some more flags, uh, again, war game flags showing on the left. Uh, some Prussian regiments, there are white flags, of which there was one, and a colored flag, of which there were typically five to ten, okay? Uh, they look significantly different from the people they were fighting at the time, which were the Russians, okay, which had a very significant eagle. They both had eagles on them, but they were different eagles, okay? So that's what the infantry, again, no fringes. Here's some more infantry flags. These show you some, um, the yellow flags are Austrian flags. The white flags are colonel's colors of the Austrian regiments, often with a saint, uh, the uh, virgin on them. Uh, again, the prime mover was the black eagle. Um, some pictures in, in a book that just covers all the history of the French flags over a hundred year period. You see a lot of the white flags and the color flags, but the St. Dennis cross. In Louis XVI's time, they started to reform the flags. Remember, the revolution was starting to break out. So we had hints, uh, a very nice system was developed, which lasted maybe three years. Okay. Uh, French flags, the revolution again. While the flags were being simplified, uh, the cavalry flags were just as complicated, made at the mask, made with fringes and the like. Uh, Napoleon himself uh, decided to simplify the system. And when he became emperor, he designed these beautiful quadrangle uh, flags. Uh, the only difference between regiments was now on what was written on the flag. Uh, again, very elaborate, very nice. So when do fringes start to appear on infantry flags? The usual culprit is um, Napoleon, okay? So we'll go to blame him. And uh, in 1812, he issued new flags to his troops just about the time they were heading to Russia. Not a very good trip. These tricolor flags are shown with fringes on all infantry flags and all, go, all work embroidered, okay? They now look like uh, cavalry flags, okay? On his return, things weren't so good. Uh, new flags were issued without the embroidery, but still had the fringe. And after that, all French military flags, infantry and cavalry had fringes. Now, it would be nice to blame this on Napoleon. And here are some examples of the flags he issued in 1812. And this is a very interesting picture that shows the pre-1812 figure on the right, the 1812, and the figures carried in, and the flags carried into the Battle of Waterloo, all with fringes except the first one. It was then pointed out to me by one of my friends that in the princely state of Württemberg, which is around Stuttgart, in the early part of the 1800s, the Duke of Württemberg gave his infantry regiments flags, okay, fringes, excuse me, with flags with fringes. No ex explanation is given. It was not universal. It was just this dinky little state. It's hard to believe that Napoleon copied them, but we got to give them pride of first place. And here are some pictures of their, their flags. Fringes are strange, okay? The early fringes were on all four sides of the flag, maybe five fringes, okay? It looks strange, banded without fanfare to what we think is normal now of uh, three sides, but initially it was four. The French new practice was two pieces of fabric, embroidered, not painted, lots of writing, edging reinforced, gold fringe added, this is the first use of a national flag pattern as a regimental flag, but it's not the last. It is now the most common system. There were no, no colonels or king's colors or equivalent. British practice. British didn't copy the French, at least not for a while. 
Uh, they started to reduce the flags inside. And finally, in 1859, 40 years later, uh, the flags got so small that Her Majesty complained about them and said, why don't you put a fringe on them? And so it was written, so it was done. By 1866, we had two color golden facing fringes. Again, no justification, that statement I have there, it's written in all the books on the topic, but nothing beyond that. Was it another French fad? Who knows? Uh, let's go on that. So here's some pictures of some of the current British flags. Uh, again, a king's color and a regimental color. Netherlands didn't have flags at Waterloo, but as soon as they got flags, they started to copy the French. German states, some states had no fringe and never copied the French. Smaller states under French influence did. Russian practice, no fringe under the czars, under the Soviet government. Lots of words, fringes start to appear in military flags. Currently, the fringes have disappeared, but the flags look like they did in 1814. Islamic practice, going through the book Rapid de Islam by Look Firm, I uh, saw no flags on national or military with fringes, only on royal and princely flags. Spanish practice, no fringes on flags through 1940, except for the Spanish Foreign Legion, an elite unit which did have fringes on their flags, even though they were not cavalry. So US practice, the revolution, chaos, no official patterns, tended to follow British practice from familiarity. Cavalry flags, of which we have several, definitely had fringes on them. Here's the flag of the first city troop as a drawing and as actual photograph. Here's the flag of Pulaski. Uh, Pulaski's le legion with a green fringe on, uh, on a, again, an embroidered small flag. War of 1812, there were two flags per regiment called colors in the British fashion. Uh, a national flag, blue with an eagle holding the arms of the United States with gold stars. And a regimental flag in a color of the regiment. This didn't last long. By 1837, an ordinance came out and they decided to put yellow fringes on the flags. By the time the Mexican War, the blue flag with the eagle became a regimental flag. The national flag was now the stars and stripes. Usually with silver stars, some debate on five or six points. Yellow fringe by legislation, but in practice, silver and gold. And here's an example of one of those flags. 1863, the ordinance says yellow fringe, blue and white cords, color the stars were silver, white, or gold. National regimental colors in the Civil War varied all over the place. Mainly the stars were gold for some reason. Uh, here's some examples of that. It's argued that the silver thread tended to tarnish. I don't know why it didn't tarnish for the other 200 years. Gold thread was sometimes substituted or gold paint was used, but most of the government flags had gold stars. The Confederate st states, when you look through the literature, the fringes seem to be rare. Uh, they're not following the previous US regulations. There's lots of borders, however, and that may have been an attempt to show fringe without the expense of having a fringe. Some brigade flags had fringes, some state flags show fringes. Princes and sovereigns have fringes, sometimes do not. Modern practice, okay. Some countries do, some countries don't. Zelko's Heimer's excellent book tells us which ones. There are other interpretations, I'll leave that to others. The observations are fringes come from armorial ban banners and standards. It's an elite thing. Naval flags, the Cedians, most national flags do not have fringes. It's a mixed bag. There does not seem to be any hidden meeting. Thanks for your attention. The end, contact me at etchels3 at aol.com. Done. Super. Art, thank you. Uh, that was a lot of information uh, and uh, <laughs> some great uh, uh, 
graphics and, and uh, examples. Uh, we do have uh, a number of questions. You should so... see the stuff that went to by the wayside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can only imagine. Uh, Cutting room floor. Gotcha. Uh, some questions here uh, from folks. I'm going to try to run through uh, uh, what we can. I think you covered it, but uh, one question was uh, fringes are not commonly found on the on the hoist edge correct not anymore Got but it. initially they were on the hoist there are photographs of them right okay and uh, uh, one individual has mentioned that uh, could it be that fringes might have been added to simulate uh, battle damage uh, you know use uh, kind of like uh, the mantle on a uh, helmet uh, for uh, armorial bearings uh, you know covering covering the, the real one covering armor you know in the heat of the day and, and those kind of things and it would get cattered with use uh what do you think no evidence of that now i think it was a pretty thing to add on to show your livery colors gotcha okay uh as far as uh, modern day uh, fringe use uh any instances where uh you can see maybe not flown from staffs, but colors or, or standards or flags meant to be used outside having any fringe? It's, there are some regulations in, in the armed services that discourages people from doing that. <laughs> it's the best ah. I can say. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, we have one here. Uh, it says the second New Hampshire regimental color from 1777 was fringed. Are you aware of that particular color? Yes. And it has been suggested that the fringes were put on after they were used. Okay. Uh, subsequent. Okay. Uh, subsequent. But I, I, I don't know. Okay. Pulling on the, the string here from one of the questions, are is there anywhere that uh, that you're aware that the fringe was actually designed as part of the field of the flag, or is it strictly in, in what you found a, in addition to the edge? My belief and that of several other people who are interested in military flags is it was something that was hung on. It was not designed into. Hence the discussion of the border compony and the fringe. Okay. So the, 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 the fringe was always an add on. One last one here. It says uh, technologies uh, of weaving is part of the story uh, as far as fringe is concerned. Uh, to pull that a little further, uh, did you find anything that uh, was peculiar to how fringe was manufactured and, and uh, uh, how that may have impacted its use with, uh, with either flags in the field or flags for indoor use? It's, it's not a field of my expertise, but we have fringes on flags existing flags going back to 1450 okay so it would be interesting to examine them but to me a fringe is a fringe is a fringe <laughs> okay okay uh well art thank you very much uh uh fantastic topic uh and and we appreciate uh, again you uh, uh sharing it with us 